Hello and welcome to Walk in the Park. I'm Cindy Brooks and it's my pleasure to introduce our new co-host, Corey Dennis. Tell our viewers a little bit about yourself, Corey. Well, hello, my name is Corey Dennis. Um, I've been a city employee for six years. I'm a community center coordinator at the North Triethnic Community Center and I'm thrilled to be here. Well, we're glad to have you, Corey. It's a delight to have you co-host the show with us. Thank you. This year, the Parks and Community Services Department has much to celebrate. That's right. The Parks Department is celebrating its centennial anniversary. It all started back in the late 1800s when cotton, cattle, and the railroads served as the economic engines that drove Fort Worth's early growth. Parks were used as anchors at the ends of the transit lines to ensure ridership of the transit system. The first park plan was developed in 1909 by renowned architect George Kistler. The intent and spirit of Kistler's original park plan has served as the basis for the implementation of major park facilities that are now the core of Fort Worth's park, recreation, and open space system. You know, for, folks in Fort Worth have been taking time for a walk in the park for over 100 years. Throughout the city, neighbors meet in what has become a unique mix of traditional parks and recreation facilities combined with educational and human services. From park cleanups beginning last January, great outdoor celebrations including Arbor Day and Heritage Tree Day celebrations, to Buffalo Boogie and concerts in the garden, the Parks and Community Services Department urges you to celebrate the great things we have to offer and what outstanding citizens are doing all year long to improve the quality of life in Fort Worth. Parks have something to offer everyone. From children to our seniors, their presence is a cohesive force in our neighborhoods and out the city. That's the truth, Corey. So happy 100th birthday to the Parks and Community Services Department. Welcome back to the show. Christmas time is approaching and Cowboy Santa's program is getting busy again. Bobby is out there to find out more about it. Welcome to today's show. My name is Bobby Muriel and we are coming from Cowboy Santa Warehouse, which is located at 801 Grove Street in downtown Fort Worth. Today we have a special guest which will be talking about the Cowboy Santa program, Ms. Carol Brown. How you doing? Thank you, Bobby, for inviting me. Carol, can you tell us a little bit about the history of the program and how much it has grown over the years? Well, Bobby, the program started back in 1981, and it started as simply a distribution program for the Marines Toys for Tots program. And over the years, we uh, began to grow, and our program began to see a new life, and we became a distribution point for Channel 8 Santa's Helpers. So over the years as the program grew, we knew we needed to put some uh, safeguards in place and things like that. And that's when we incorporated our Neighborhood Resources Development Program. And we began to do certifications on the clients that came in for the toys. And as that grew, and as the need in our community grew, we decided we needed to be more than just a distribution site. We needed to actually start collecting toys and distributing toys. So some 10 years ago, in the city of Fort Worth, there were programs with the police department, the fire department, other departments in the city. Everybody was doing toy programs. So our then assistant city manager, Libby Watson, said, let's combine all these programs so that our efforts uh, serve more people. And so thus, Cowboy Santas was created. And uh, Cowboy Santas has grown so much now uh, until it has, it is just an umbrella for lots of different programs. Carol, what does this program mean to the community of Tarrant County and how many kids are y'all expected to help this year? Well, in Tarrant County, because the, we have what we consider the other Fort Worth, those that are at or below the poverty income guidelines, it's a, it's a big help in our community. 
we, we have parents who have to choose between buying toys for Christmas or paying the rent, buying toys for Christmas or feeding their kids. So when we supply the toys to these families, then they can take care of the basic needs for their families. This year our target is 12,500 kids and we're hoping we can meet that target. Where would a family go to apply and what are the criteria that they would need to apply for this program? A family can go to any of our Community Action Partners offices, which are located throughout Tarrant County. Uh, our intake dates are Tuesdays and Fridays, uh, and they would just need to call the uh, Community Action Partners Center closest to them. And what they're going to have to have available and what they're going to have to bring is proof of income for the last 30 days, Social Security cards for other household members if they have them, uh, birth certificates for their children, uh, proof of residency, which can be a utility bill, and a picture ID. And if they can't find which center is closest to them, they can call 817-392-TOYS, and that number will lead them uh, to somebody who can give them some assistance. If somebody wanted to donate, whether it be cash or toys, uh, how would they go about doing this? Uh, all they'd have to do is call the 817-871-TOYS number and that is our both our help and our donation line or they can go to our website CowboySantas.com and uh, they can even donate online. With such a large number of kids that y'all are going to be helping out this year, I'm pretty sure y'all going to need volunteers. Uh, how would they go about signing, signing up uh, or get more information about this program? Bobby, they can also call the 817-392-TOYS number and someone will get back with them. Uh, but also they can go on to our website, CowboySantas.com, and sign up to volunteer uh, and come and help us. We always need volunteers. At this point, we need them for shelving and bagging and, and distribution and all those kind of jobs. Bobby, also with the donations, they can drop donations off at any fire or police station throughout the city of Fort Worth. They don't just necessarily have to, you know, bring it to our warehouse. But we'd love to have them come and visit us at 801 Grove Street, which is our Cowboy Santa warehouse. Um, also with uh, our donations, we always have certain donations that we're lacking. For instance, ethnic dolls, we always need those. We always need things for infants, zero to 12 months. We also need things for preteens, and we're looking for things like handheld games and radios and little watch gift sets or anything that a 11 and 12 year old would like because they're kind of not off into dolls and stuff at that age, so we need those extra things for them. And also, uh, the senior citizens, how do we take care of them? Okay, we have a Silver Stars program, Bobby, that uh, helps those seniors who are 60 and up, and uh, we provide them with a nice little Christmas bag of goodies, and we, our target this year is to serve 400 seniors, and each senior, we give them a value gift of $25, and so people can also make donations to that program. This year, with the Silver Stars, we're taking a few new twists. Uh, people can set up a tree in their lobbies and put on there a little stars that say we need four blankets, we need socks, stuff like that. Or you can host a silver party, which is much like a baby shower, but you're bringing gifts for seniors. And then, of course, you can just make the monetary donations. Again, if somebody wants to do that, they can call the 817-392-TOYS number and donate to that. Carol, thank you very much for this wonderful information. I hope that everybody can participate in this program. It is a worthy cause. Uh, thank you very much again for sharing your time and all the good information. Thank you very much. Thank you, Bobby. Thank you. Thank you all for joining us today. Again, my name is Bobby Muriel. Uh, please, uh, I would like everybody to participate. This is a wonderful program. And uh, uh, y'all come down. Again, it's at 801 Grove Street in downtown Fort Worth. Uh, thank you all very much, and happy holidays to all. For more information about Cowboy Santas, visit www.cowboysantas.org or call the number on the screen. Community centers offer a lot of programs. Vicki is there to give us a report. 
Good morning, I'm Vicki Burdo. I'm here at uh, Sycamore Community Center in the Sycamore Park. And with us this morning, we have Andrew McFarland, who is the District Superintendent for the Northeast Region. And Andy, I want to welcome you to the show. Well, thanks, Vicki. It's great to be here. It's a lovely morning to be out in the park. There's a lot we've got to talk about. There's a lot going on in our centers. And we're really looking forward to talking to you about it. Andrew, many people think that during the fall and winter that the Parks Department is hibernating. Tell me what we do in the winter. Well, the leaves may fall off the trees and the grass may stop growing, but indoors the Parks Department keeps on going. We run 19 community centers and they run a whole huge gamut of activities and programs for people of all ages. I mean, we run after school programs. We have exercise programs for young and old. We have specialist programs aimed at keeping teens off the streets, exercise classes, everything from Tai Chi to salsa dance to martial arts to gymnastics. We have a big range and a lot of sites. A lot of centers now have very nice weight rooms, exercise rooms filled with modern equipment for both strength and aerobic training. And these are available whenever the centers are open and some centers even offer personal training classes and other help with you know, personal fitness regime. Our centers offer a lot of special events. Can you tell us about some of the things that we offer? Nearly all the community centers offer a special event for most of the major holidays and some of the minor ones that don't get recognized as well. I mean, we're, we're here today early in November and a lot of people have just celebrated Halloween, a fall festival. Some people have celebrated the Day of the Dead. And coming up, we have Thanksgiving festivals, the end of the year celebrations of, um, of Hanukkah, of Christmas, and of Kwanzaa. Then they'll be into the new year, and there'll be Martin Luther King, Black History Month. Of course, Hispanic Heritage has just gone past. So we have events to celebrate most things. And these will be both educational, informative, and fun. Youth Sports is a big program in the city of Fort Worth. And tell the folks about what we do and what kind of programs we offer during Youth Sports. The Youth Sports program offers three programs a year. We do football, sorry, I'll give, give away my background there. We do soccer, flag football, and volleyball in the fall. In the spring, we do baseball, we do softball, we do t-ball, and also in the winter, we do basketball. These programs, are run are offered by every community center and they're held at various locations in the city. They're very, very affordable. It's $10 to participate and for that you will get uniform, membership of a team, practice times and a uniform and six to eight games during the season. Very affordable, well-run program. Some of our sites have a boxing program and I think our folks will be really interested about the boxing and what it offers. We have boxing Quickly, I'll talk about oh, three programs, uh, three sites. Boxing is a traditional, if you like, way out for youth. And we have three programs that offer box, uh, boxing to youth and to young adults. Again, they're very affordable, ranging in from free to $30 a month. And on top of that, the, for that, the participants come to train, they spar. If they wish to compete competitively, they can do so. And some have gone on to compete at national level, and we have had, over the last few years, a number of championship belts come back to Fort Worth from our boxing programs. Along with the boxing, there's also the Boxing Fit program, and that's a new thing that we're starting to get into. So can you give us some information about that? That's perhaps a side of the boxing that people don't think about, is that not only is it a method of, that gives you self-discipline, but a uh, a means to self-defense, but also it is exceedingly physically demanding. And what a lot, of, a lot of sites are doing now is the boxing coaches are offering sort of box fit type programs where people do everything apart from the hitting. They do the jump roping, they do the, the hand coordination exercises, the, the shadow boxing, and the pillow bunch, you know, the bag, the bag work but they don't actually get into the ring and engage in pugilism with someone else, you know, which some people are a bit shy about doing. So yeah, it's a great way of keeping fit. I want to have a party and I need some rental space. Can you guys help me with that? All the community centers have a number of rooms ranging in size from, I guess, size of a family living room to big rooms that hold in excess of 100 people and as well as the gymnasiums as well. And these are all available for rent for a variety of events, you know, private parties, 
meetings, people use them for wedding receptions, quinceanera, baby showers. They also get used by community associations for neighborhood meetings and things like that. And, you know, inquire at the local community center and they will be pleased to help you or direct you to another center if they can't help you themselves. After school is something that is offered at all our sites and do we have the same thing at all sites? It is offered pretty much at every community center and the size and nature of them varies according to location and proximity of the nearest school and also the age of the school kids involved. Generally, I mean, after school is a very important component. A lot of research has shown that kids who take part in after school programs do better in school. They stay in school longer, they're less likely to drop out, they're less likely to be involved in delinquent activity. All after school programs offer the same core components, that is tutoring and or help with homework. Some will bring in guest speakers to speak from time to time. They will find exercise programs and recreation programs. They will also offer classes and discussion on ways of um, self-development, personal development to in core, um, encourage life skills. And they'll offer a course, and which a lot of kids consider the most important thing, they all offer a nutritious snack when they get there after school. And the other thing we like to encourage in our after school programs is community responsibility. You know, encouraging the kids to do things which help them develop to be good citizens of this great city of ours. Andrew, I want to thank you for being on the show. It's been a pleasure. He's also my boss. <laughs> but it's been good. You gave us a lot of good information. And I hope folks will take advantage of the Parks Department during the fall and the winter. We are not hibernating. We are working, and we're working for you, and offering many, many programs that you need to take advantage of. So with that, I'm going to say goodbye. Stay tuned for the list of community centers at the end of the show. And here is a list of municipal golf courses. Did you know that your kids can get archery lessons at one of our community centers? Anne-Marie will tell us more. I'm Anne-Marie Mendez. I'm here at Greenbrier Community Center with Recreation Programmer Derek DeBusk. Derek, thank you for joining us today. Thank you for having me. So what do we have here today? Today we have an archery range set up for Greenbrier's Archery Club. Archery is a, a sport that's actually growing in popularity. It's a sport that takes a lot of uh, concentration, dedication, eye-hand coordination, and it's a sport that's actually becoming very, very popular in uh, a lot of uh, Texas school districts. They are now uh, participating in a program called the National Archery in the Schools Program. And what that program does is, does is it allows fourth through uh, 12th graders to participate uh, in tournaments against each other. Uh, they can actually participate in programs at the local level, regional, state, and even national tournaments. Uh, we at Greenbrier actually have implemented the archery program into our after school program as well as our summer day camp and any other camps that we have throughout the year. Can anyone participate in the archery program? Absolutely. Archery is a sport that doesn't take a lot of physical strength. It's a sport that takes a lot of uh, discipline, concentration, and uh, it allows boys and girls to really compete against each other. Uh, without a big advantage from boys by their natural strength. Um, archery has uh, really grown at our community center. We now offer archery in our after school program as well as our summer day camp program. And we do offer an archery club for the community, uh, for the public, uh, every Tuesday from 4 p.m. to 5 p.m. And uh, the cost for that program is $10 per month. And then as well as if your child is uh, enrolled in our after school program, the child gets to participate uh, in the archery club with no extra fee. And the fee for our after school program is $25 a month. Where did you receive your archery training? Uh, I received my archery training through Texas Parks and Wildlife Department. Now we have an incredible relationship with Texas Parks and Wildlife Department that allows us uh, access to their teachers, their staff, and they have actually come out 
annually and trained all of our summer day camp staff and community center staff uh, outdoor education skills such as archery and fishing, camping and kayaking. And we have also uh, been able to use some of their equipment uh, to, to uh, use during our summer day camp program because some of this equipment is actually really expensive and without them some of the community centers wouldn't have the ability to teach these skills. Uh, fortunately for Greenbrier Community Center we have received several grants over the past uh, couple of years that has allowed us to buy all of our own archery, camping, kayaking, and fishing equipment. Is it safe and have you had any accidents or injuries? We haven't had any accidents or injuries uh, while I've been teaching the program and I don't know of any. Um, archery st statistically is probably safer than most youth sports programs that your kids are involved today. Um, the first thing I teach the kids while I'm uh, teaching them archery is uh, safety and what the consequences are if they do act in an unsafe manner. And one of the things I use uh, to control the kids while I'm teaching archery is a, a whistle command system. And let me quickly go through that. What I mean by a whistle command system is one whistle a burst means that the range is clear and everyone may shoot. Uh, two whistle burst means that uh, the kids will be standing behind a waiting line, that they hear two whistles, they can actually proceed pick up the bow and go and straddle the shooting line. And then they stand there and wait until they hear the one whistle burst. And then three whistle burst means go get arrows, which means that they can actually uh, go down, retrieve the arrows, means that no one else is shooting, all the bows are put up and it's actually safe to go down range. And then if they hear five or more whistle commands, then they know that um, uh, they need to stop whatever they're doing uh, even if they're about to draw the bow back and let go, they have to slowly let the bow in, take the arrow, put it down, put the bow up, and go stand behind our waiting line. For some reason, it's become unsafe downrange, and we don't want them shooting anymore. You see here, we have an indoor archery range. Uh, most people think that archery is an outdoor sport only. Uh, as you can see here, you can actually do archery indoors. And when you set up an archery range, it is all about safety. And um, later when we... Uh, when you see the archery range, I will go through and show you what each line is and how we keep the range safe. But uh, it's very important that you do keep safety uh, a number one priority when you're setting up the range. Where does your passion for teaching archery come from? My passion for teaching archery uh, comes from the fact that I'm teaching inner city kids, kids that don't have the possibility to learn these skills uh, uh, on a normal day-to-day -day basis because of where they live and it's a real reward to put a bow in a kid's hands and let them come out and experience something that's brand new to them and I also get excited about the fact that I'm taking kids away from the computers away from video games and they're getting to participate in something that's actually physically active that keeps them moving and is actually some kind of exercise uh, I am really passionate about the outdoors and I love the fact that I get to teach these kids, you know, archery as well as fishing, camping, and kayaking. Thank you for all this information on the archery program. It seems like you're really on target. Would you like to try? Sure. Let's go. You knock it underneath. Underneath there. Yeah. And then you're going to do just two fingers underneath it. You don't touch the arrow at all. Okay, you're going to come up since and you're going to straddle the shooting line. So you put the shooting line between your feet because this is how I teach it. So when we put it between your feet. This right here? No, the shooting line. This oh, jump this up. right there here? There you go. Yep. You're going to pull back to the corner of your mouth. Let's see. Pull back a little bit further. There you go. So I'm trying to figure out how. I guess I'm ready for the Olympics. Not quite. For more information about the archery program, call Greenbrier Community Center at 817-926-6214 and ask for Derek DeBusk. Thank you for joining us for this edition of Walk in the Park. I hope you enjoyed the show. We leave you today with a list of community centers. Have a great day.
usted tiene problemas con ofensas criminales de graffiti, hay dos cosas que tiene que hacer. Primero, tiene que hacer un reporte de policía y tiene que llamar al 817-335-4222 para hacer un reporte de policía. La segunda cosa que tiene que hacer es llamarle al departamento de graffiti para que le limpien el graffiti y el número es 817-212-2700. Si el problema con graffiti ya pasó este, para reportarlo, lo único que tiene que hacer es tomar una foto. Cuando llame la policía a hacer un reporte, ellos toman una foto. Es muy importante tener el retrato del daño a su propiedad para que el detective pueda investigar el caso. Si ya pasó y descubre que el graffiti es un día o dos días después, entonces es necesario para limpiar, llamar al número que le di. Uh, si lo limpia, luego, luego este, es menos problemas en su área. Si usted deja el graffiti en su propiedad, el, el valor de la propiedad baja en la mayoría de la área, que sea residencia, que sea de negocio. Es muy importante remover el graffiti en dibujo, unas letras, unos números, uh, lo más pronto que pueda. Si no quita el graffiti de su propiedad, que sea su residencia o su negocio, es muy posible que su terreno baje de valor. El departamento de graffiti tiene dos clases uh, de modos de remover su pintura. La primera, podemos limpiar pintar la propiedad, acaso si la cerca o la pared está pintada en blanco o diferentes colores. La segunda modo que podemos remover el graffiti es en paredes que sean de ladrillo, de piedra y en ese caso podemos usar agua de presión o agua de presión con arena. Si usted tiene información de personas que están haciendo esta ofensa criminal, es muy importante llamarla a la policía al número 817-335-4222. Acaso que si la ofensa está ocurriendo uh, presente, es muy importante de llamarle al 911 para reportarlo. Si usted mira el graffiti en una propiedad, o si es dueño de una propiedad que tiene graffiti que lo tenemos que remover, puede llamar al número 817-212-2700.